my puppet friends who are helping us learn about music. So today's pair of opposites, I hope you guys have noticed that our musical friends have come in opposites. This is Beso the Bear, who has a low voice, and Soprano the Bird, who has a high voice. And we're going to do a hello song from Israel. Now, the interesting thing about this hello song is that in Israel, many people speak Hebrew. And <clears throat> the word for hello in Hebrew is shalom. And shalom means hello. It also means goodbye. And it also means peace. Okay? And what it really means is when I say hello to you, I am wishing you peace. And when I say goodbye to you, I am wishing you peace. I am wishing that you come in peace. I am wishing that you go in peace. Well, we're going to have Beso sing us just the hello part of the song. And then we're going to have Soprano sing us the hello part of the song. Here's Beso. Shalom, Haverim, Shalom, Haverim, Shalom, Shalom. Hello to my friends, hello to my friends, hello, hello. Here's Soprano. Shalom, Haverim, Shalom, Haverim, Shalom. So when I want to sing like basso, I have to go way down low in my chest. And if I want to sing like soprano, I have to go way up high out of my head. Okay? And that is why people who are learning to be professional singers often hear about chest voice and head voice. Now I want to um, <clears throat> introduce you all to a good friend of mine. <coughs> this is a slide whistle. And the slide whistle, when it's all the way open, has a low sound, and when it's all the way closed, it has a high sound. So we're gonna follow low notes and high notes. You can do it with your whole body if you want. So when I'm playing low, you can be crouching down. But you know what happens if I crouch down on the movie? Watch what happens if I crouch down on the movie. Okay, I'm crouching down. But you won't see me if I'm crouching down. So I'm going to invite you to crouch down with my low notes and you to come up with my high notes. And I can do the high note part with you, okay? You ready? So everybody start down low. Thank you. 
wind whistle shows us big is low, small is high. That's the way the music flies. Big is low, small is high. That's the way the music flies. And that pretty much applies to any instrument. And I'm going to show you some of the different instruments where big is low and small is high. Now one thing that often confuses people about low and high is that they're not the same as loud and quiet. But lots of people, because of the way our language works, lots of people say, turn that music down. So people think that a low sound means a quiet sound. Or a high sound means a loud sound. But of course it's not. It's totally different. It's talking about pitch in music. And pitch means, am I singing out of my chest voice? Or my head voice? So, basso and soprano. So the slide whistle, we just heard how it does the and the but we can do that same thing with our voices. Okay, you guys ready? Ready to follow me? Taking off my glasses. Here we go. Okay, so again, just like with the slide whistle, I'm going to be going down to my toes. You're not going to see me for a minute, but you're going to hear me, okay? So you can follow this down. We're going to start up high at our head. So everybody sing with me. Head, 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 ears, 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 shoulders, ears, Head, waist, hips, 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 knees, 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 ankles, 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 toes, toes, ankles, knees, toes, ankles, knees, toes, ankles, knees, hips, ankles, knees, hips, Ankles, knees, hips, ankles, knees, hips, waist, head, ears, shoulders, waist, hips, knees, ankles, 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 toes. Now everybody hold on to your toes and we're going to go from our toes to our head, toes. Head, go back down, toes, head. Now we're going to go to our toes and we're going to turn our voice into a slide whistle. Toes, head, head, toes. So our voice can do exactly what a slide whistle can do gonna show you another instrument. We've already used the xylophone earlier in our videos, but the xylophone is a great example of Big is low, small is high, that's the way the music flies. Big is low, small is high, that's the way the music flies. So we could do that song we just did. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you that song with all our body parts. It's originally a song from France, okay? So we're going to do it one more time singing the words 
the original song from France is not about our body parts, okay? It's just a beautiful tune. So we're going to start up here. Everybody put your hands on your head again. Head, 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 ears, 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 shoulders, ears, head, waist, hips, 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 knees, 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 ankles, 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 toes, toes, ankles, knees, toes, ankles, knees, toes, ankles, knees, hips. Ankles, knees, hips, ankles, knees, hips, ankles, knees, hips, waist, head, ears, shoulders, waist, hips, knees, ankles, 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 toes. Now just listen to the tune. This is what it sounded like a long time ago when it came from France. French children's song, it sounds to me a little bit like a lullaby. Maybe if I sang it loud, it wouldn't sound like a lullaby, but there's something about that melody. Starting up here, ending up down here. Small is high, big is low. That's the way the music goes. You know, when our bodies are awake, our brains have a better chance of being awake and learning too, okay? This is an old American folk song. I'm pretty sure many of you know this song. And in the original song, it's just about a bear going over the mountain. But we're going to have some other animals go over that mountain. So I want you to loosen up your body, turn yourselves into a bear, and walk like a bear over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain, the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. And all that he could see, yes, all that he could see was the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain, other side of the mountain was all that he could see. Now how about the bird? Let's have the bird go over the mountain, because of course birds can go over the mountain too. So put on your wings. The bird went over the mountain, the bird went over the mountain, the bird went over the mountain to see what she could see. Well, all that she could see, all that she could see was the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain was all that she could see. Let's think of somebody else low to the ground. A snake. Snakes don't necessarily have a low voice, but they're definitely low to the ground, right? So the snake went over the mountain, the snake went over the mountain, snake went over the mountain to see what he could see. And all that he could see, all that he could see was the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain. Other side of the mountain was all that he could see. Ha! Huh. What's something else that might fly over the mountain besides a bird? We did a bird. What about a butterfly? Everybody put on your butterfly wings. The monarch butterflies are starting to leave Mexico and fly to their summer spots in the north. So Butterflies fly over the mountain, butterflies fly over the mountain, butterflies fly over the mountain to see what they could see. And all that they could see, yes, all that they could see was the other side of the mountain, the other side of the mountain, other side of the mountain was all that they could see. 
All right, we need something else that's low to the ground. What about worms? Turn yourselves into worms crawling over the mountain. The worms crawl over the mountain. The worms crawl over the mountain. Worms crawl over the mountain to see what they could see. Now all that they can see, yes, all that they can see is the other side of the mountain. The other side of the mountain. Other side of the mountain is all that they can see. So now it is time to do a song about a bird, a very famous bird from Australia. This bird is famous because the bird song that it has sounds like <laughs> So this bird sounds like it's laughing and it is called kookaburra. So put on your bird wings, get ready to fly around the room. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry bookkeeping of the bush is he. Love, Kookaburra, love. Kookaburra, gay, your life must be. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Eating all the gum drops he can see. Stop, Kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, leave some there for. And this is a game, and when we're all together, it's a game where everybody's holding hands, and one person is the bird, and that bird weaves in and out of people's hands until they get to the end of the song, and then they choose the next bird. But we can't do that with just me. So we're going to turn our bird song into a song where the bird is landing on different parts of our bodies. All right. So you ready? Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window and sit upon my shoulder. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window and sit upon my hand. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window and sit upon my head. Fly through my window, my little bird, fly through my window, my little bird, fly through my window, my little bird, and sit upon my shoulder. Fly. And that song is simply called Little Bird. So now I want to show you what that song, Little Bird, sounds like on different instruments. So here, of course, is my guitar. Do you remember a few minutes ago, we were talking about big is low, small is high. So look at the difference. 
between my guitar. And this is called a guitalele. And a guitalele is a combination of a guitar and a ukulele. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. So I want you to hear how that song is going to sound on the guitar and then on the guitalele because big is low, small is high. <laughs> And sing along with me if you can. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Sit upon my shoulder. Fly through my window, my little bird, fly through my window, my little bird, through my window, my little bird. Sit upon my shoulder. I'm going to do it once without me singing so that you can hear the guitar, okay? Lele, okay. Oh, oh, little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Little bird, little bird, fly through my window. Sit upon my nose. Fly through the window, my little bird, fly through my window. My little bird, fly through my window. My little bird, sit upon. Listen without the song. So everything sounds a little bit higher on a smaller instrument, okay? And that same thing is true of our drums. We've been playing with my drum a lot, okay? <laughs> Big is low, small is high. That is how the music flies. Here's my big drum. Here's my little drum. So, listen to what happens. Big is low, small is high. That is how the music flies. Small is high, big is low. That for a challenge. When I'm playing the high drum, your bodies have to be way up high. When I'm playing the low drum, your bodies have to be way down low. Okay? Ready? Let's start down low. So start crouching down the way we started with our slide whistle. And then as soon as you hear the high drum, get your hands up in the air. Ready? We're going to do an African beat. So, one, two, ready, crouch. Ready, go, We're gonna start up high this time. Now let's just 
just do some kind of random. That was easy to pick up because I was staying a long time on high and going to low very predictably. And the first one was staying a long time on low and going to high very predictably. Now let's move them around. You ready? Let's start. Let's start down low. is great training for knowing whether a sound is low or high and letting our bodies respond to it. Now, we're going to do something a little different. We are going to end today's video with a book a book accompanied by some classical music. The music is um, from Antonio Vivaldi's Four Seasons. Antonio Vivaldi was an Italian composer who wrote beautiful music for orchestras. And one of his most famous pieces of music is called The Four Seasons. So we're gonna hear the version of Spring that was put together by a group called Earthbeat. And it's not just Vivaldi's original composition, it's also mixed in with nature sounds and with uh, world instruments. But Vivaldi's Four Seasons is a great example of using all of the different concepts that we've learned using basso low, soprano high, allegro fast, adagio slow, forte loud, piano quiet, staccato jumpy, legato smooth. Vivaldi puts those all together in the most beautiful music. And here we have basso the lion and soprano the red bird. So not exactly bass of the bear and soprano the bluebird, but very similar. So we're going to read this story as we hear this music. One afternoon, a little red bird saw a lion with a bushy green tail, as green as the forest. The bird had never seen anything so unusual and so pretty. Just looking at it made her happy. Lion, lion, she said, why is your tail so green? The lion didn't understand the bird's language. He thought she was simply chirping. He smiled at her and wandered down to a field of orange flowers. The bird watched him roll and sniff and chase butterflies. Then slowly walk west with the setting sun and disappear into a cave. The bird waited on a tree nearby. She wanted to see the lion's green tail again. But the lion didn't come out of the cave, so the bird made herself a soft nest and slept through the warm, starry night. In the morning, the lion came out, swishing his tail, which was no longer green, but orange as a flower, orange as a butterfly, orange as the setting sun. Lion, lion, the bird chirped, astonished, why is your tail so orange? Again. The lion didn't understand the bird. He smiled at her and climbed over the hill and up the mountain to a deep blue lake beneath a bright blue sky where he soaked his tired paws while the bird splashed nearby. At the end of the day, the lion climbed back down the mountain over the hill and home to his cave. The bird settled down in the tree, wondering as the sky darkened about the lion and his orange tail. But in the morning, the lion's tail was no longer orange. It was blue as the brightest blue sky, blue as the deep mountain lake where he'd soaked his paws. Lion, lion, the bird chirped enchanted. How did your tail change from orange to blue? Are you a magician? The lion just smiled and ambled over to a bush full of shiny red berries. They were beautiful berries, but very sour. Lion, the bird chirped, making a face. 
These berries are still too sour to eat. Why don't you pick them when they're ripe? The lion just smiled, thinking how much he liked the birds chirping company. All afternoon, the lion picked berries while the bird nibbled sunflower seeds nearby. Once when the lion stepped on a thorn, the bird pulled it out for him. At sundown, the lion swished his tail goodbye and returned to his cave. The bird settled down on her nest. She wondered what color the lion's tail would be in the morning. She wished he would answer her questions. During the night, a storm came. Thunder crashed and lightning flashed. Rain swept away the bird's nest. Hearing the noise, the lion rushed out and reached up into the tree where the bird crouched, shivering and scared. He lifted her down and carried her into his cave. The cave was warm and colorful. The walls were filled with pictures of green forests, orange flowers, butterflies, sunsets, a bright blue sky, and a deep blue lake. Lion, lion, the bird chirped delighted. How did these pictures get here? The lion smiled, dipped his tail into a bowl of shiny red berry juice, and painted a picture of the bird chirping on a berry bush. The bird sang while the lion painted. She sang a song without any questions, full of color and joy. The lion had never heard anything so unusual and so pretty. Just listening made him happy. In the morning, the storm was past. The world shone fresh and bright. The lion's tail was berry red and the little bird knew why. She sang her happiest song and wondered what the lion would paint that night. So that's The Lion and the Little Red Bird by Elisa Clevin and the music. As you can hear, it's very different than Vivaldi now. Is The Four Seasons by Antonio Vivaldi, arranged with nature sounds by Earthbeat. Do you remember at the very beginning of this class, we sang Shalom Haverim, and I told you that Shalom means hello. So we sang it at the beginning of the class as a hello song, but it also means goodbye. So we're gonna sing it now at the end of the class as a goodbye song. And it also means peace, which belongs to hello or goodbye. And we're gonna sing it low, like peso. And then hi. Next class for more of Besolo.